Jesus had a friend. The man was named Lazarus. Lazarus got sick. Jesus came when he was in the tomb and raised him back to life again. Now I'm going to ask a question that might not be expected. Priests don't talk like this. We hear the gospel. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. So what? Who cares? Why hear it again? That's 2,000 years ago. That's old news. Why bother? Why bother hear it again? Well, I'm going to share with you a memory of mine. I'm stretching on some of the details, but I share it for a purpose. I believe it was the second decade of the century, and it was in Southampton in England, on the sh coast. Out of Southampton, out of the harbor, steamed a ship bound for the United States. Almost immediately after it got out of the harbor and turned into the Atlantic, and headed west. Almost immediately there was a public announcement. All passengers, all passengers, go to the decks and see from the crew how to use the lifeboats. All passengers go to the decks. The announcement was made. Almost no one went. Almost no one went. The question was, why bother? So what? Lifeboats, that's old news. That's 19th century stuff. When ships were made of wood, and they had mass, and they needed sails. This is the second decade of the 20th century. This ship is new. It gleams. It's powerful. It's luxurious. It is huge. It's a titan among ships, a titanic. This ship can't sink. Why bother? That's old news, lifeboats. And the ship steamed into the night, into the North Atlantic, at 27 knots. In the middle of the night, it hit a mountain of ice that ripped its guts open. And into a massive hole poured tons and tons and tons of water. And the band played on. And then there was another announcement. Would the passengers please go to the lifeboats? And almost no one went. This ship is so big and so powerful and so secure and so warm. And outside, it's dark, and it's night, and it's winter, and it's the North Atlantic. I'm staying where it's cozy and safe and secure. I'm not going out there. And the nose began to settle, and the stern began to rise. Please go to the lifeboats. Almost no one went. And then some of the lifeboats were lowered into the sea, almost empty. And it was not for an hour or so more when the nose fell below the waves and the stern began to rise high above the sea that people began to panic and go to those little boats 
with all the fierceness of a wild desire to finally to be alive, to be alive. But it was too late, and there were too few of them. In that horrible night to remember, a thousand people and more drowned or were dead because the ship that they trusted would be forever and would get them safe and secure wherever they wanted to go. That ship failed them, and they died on it. Who cares why bother? What's in it for us? Old news. Jesus had a friend, and the friend died. And the friend then lived because of Jesus. In a sense, the Lord himself has said to each of you, and to each of us, to me, I have bought at a terrible price a lifeboat for each of you. And I want you to know it's there. I'm 44 years old, pushing 45. I'm no longer young. I can remember a time when I was run and I'd be fast, and I was strong, and I felt that this body was unsinkable, strong and vital, and it would be like that forever. And a message to me when I thought like that, that there is a lifeboat, sounded to me, so cares, so what? I'm 44 years old now, and I'm a wiser man. I know that there's going to be a dark night for me, or I will hit an iceberg, and I will be ripped open because of disease or an accident or just the wear and tear of old age. In that moment, I will need desperately to have trusted the friend who provided the lifeboats and be willing to use his gift. It's easy today, perhaps, to look at this man with Lazarus who was dead and say, that's old news. Jesus went to his tomb and called his name and said, come forth, and he did. Jesus promises, someday you will have a tomb. If you've been friend to me, I'll be friend to you. And I will come to your grave and speak your name and invite you to come forth. He's asking us, remember the lifeboat, stay close, be friends to your best friend, and know that the soul what, what's in it for us, sometime in your life, those questions are going to sound very foolish. The Lord has built a terrible price, a lifeboat for us. Be wise enough to be friends with a friend who gives it to you and shares it with us all.